Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Reference Recordings. And one of you pegged this next one. Um, really, it's a wonderful performance that has an amazing amount of consensus behind it. I mean, all of these reference recordings, of course, reflect a certain consensus. They do. But this one really... I, for, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. I'm talking about the Schumann symphonies as a cycle. And the consensus pick is Wolfgang Savalisch with the Staatskapelle Dresden on Warner, formerly EMI. This has always been the one. And there are wonderful Schumann cycles out there. Don't get me wrong. There are fabulous Schumann cycles out there. It seems almost everybody who did them did them well because they care about the music. I mean, Christoph Dachnani, Schultes was really good. Um, uh, Ricardo Mutis was really good. James Levine was really good. Bernstein was fabulous twice. Uh, really remarkably fine Schumann out there. And some amazing individual performances, too. There's the Fort Fengler Fourth Symphony, um, the Giolini Rhenish Symphony. Uh, I could go on, but I don't need to because this is the one. And what makes it remarkable, there are a couple of things that make it really remarkable. First of all, uh, the fact that it's Savalish at all. I mean, Savalish was nobody's idea of a compelling conductor. He was a good conductor. He was a Kapellmeister. That is a musicianly sensible, Germanically focused conductor. I mean, his Beethoven cycle was a snooze. His Brahms cycle wasn't terribly interesting. He just wasn't that fascinating. He got the Philadelphia Orchestra, made a couple of good records of mostly Germanic rep repertoire, like Hindemith, for example. And, but by and large, he was nobody's vision of dynamism on the podium. But here, he's on fire. And he's on fire in music, which is, you know, let's just say stubborn stubborn to take light, to catch fire, to, to, to light up. But he is, and a lot of the credit has to go to the Staatskapelle Dresden, one of the great German orchestras, so different from the Berlin Phil, so uncarianized. In other words, they have that wonderful, unblended sonority, which works so well as Schumann because of his problems with orchestration. You hear wind sections, the strings are transparent, the brass are, are, are cutting and incisive, but they don't have to be too loud, the timpani or It's just a wonderful orchestra for this music. And frankly, uh, it, maybe it still is, but the fact of the matter is you have to give Savalish a lot of credit too, because Tielemann recently did his second ugh, Schumann cycle with this same orchestra. It was even worse than his first one. It was horrible. And the orchestra plays horribly for him. I mean, it doesn't sound anything like this Staatskapelle Dresden, which is fascinating. It just proves that conductors do matter. I mean, every so often, they really do. So, so this, is, this is remarkable, absolutely remarkable. First class sonics. Um, it was a, I believe it was a, an East German co-production in those days. And let me see if I can figure that out, if it says so here. Uh, Parlophone Records, no, that was them. Uh, da, 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 I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is it sounds great. Now we need to talk about, oh, oh and there's a bonus here. You get the Overture Scherzo and Finale, which is a masterpiece, uh, a Sinfonietta, actually, as Tovey called it, um, that people don't know at all. And it's one of Schumann's great orchestral works. It's delightful. So that's a big bonus too. Here's the thing. Here's the thing with Schumann symphonies. It's often said that he had, uh, that his orchestration was thick and needs amendment and adjusting, and so it, so it does to a degree. A lot of the best Schumann performances don't tinker with his orchestration at all, which, which goes to show that when we say it's bad, that doesn't mean it's unlistenable, it doesn't mean he's completely incompetent, but it, it, it could, could use some improvement. It could be better. Mahler rescored all of the Schumann symphonies. But numbers one and two are okay. He really didn't have a problem with that. One has brilliant scoring. It's got a triangle part. It's, it's beautiful. The second also has lovely woodwind writing. It was okay. Number four, um, because it exists in two versions, has an issue. Um, the first version was perfectly fine because it's an earlier work. See, Schumann's orchestration got worse as he got older, which is fascinating because you'd think he could listen and see what worked and then 
you know, stick with that. But it, that wasn't what happened. What happened is he became a conductor. He became a conductor in Dusseldorf, and he was a terrible conductor, and he, he, really a bad conductor. And, and so as a result, he tried to make his own works as foolproof as possible, which meant doubling all of the wind parts with violins and things and have everybody play everything. And, and that's the problem, except for the horns. You know, I mean, he always had a feeling for horn writing. So that was really what the issue was. And with the fourth symphony, you've got the earlier version, um, which is more transparent, and then the later version, which is less transparent, but it has so much more, first of all, it's the version where he says you play the whole thing as one single movement with, you know, the movements all attached to each other. And he wrote that glorious introduction to the finale, which isn't in the first version. And it, it, it's, it's a fairly different enough work um, that you have to play the revised version to get the full impact, the full... I'm having a... Look, listen, listen. Watch it. Move. What are you doing? That's, that's the cat. She wants to play fetch, as she always does when I'm doing reference recording talks. Go figure. You ready? Go get it. All right, there we go. So, so you have to do the revised version of the fourth. Um, you know, people have recorded the earlier version, but the revision is so much better. I mean, you could do most of the revision and take most of the orchestration from the first version, but it's a lot of work and people don't like to hybridize like that. Then there's the, the Rhenish, which is the last of them, actually, and it's the most thickly scored of all, especially the first movement, which is impenetrably dense. Um, a little bit of pruning to let you hear the woodwind parts is not be a bad thing. I mean, the fourth movement is gloriously scored for brass with trombones. I mean, you know, as long as he wasn't writing for woodwinds and strings, he was in business. The problem is that great orchestration is a function of your writing for woodwinds, as we all know. And that was Schumann's weakest link. So the best performances are able to somehow, with, through, through basic sensible musical measures of things like balance and phrasing and accent to allow you to hear what Schumann wrote in the most glowing and charming possible way. And these performances do it. They do it like none others. You wouldn't, you wouldn't dream of revising the orchestration when you listen to these performances. They have such vitality, especially the Rhenish, by the way. My God, it's just exciting. Incredibly, it's thrilling even, you know, I mean, he's, he's, he, Schumann has so much vitality and edge and urgency and youthful romantic ardor. That's it. It's ardor. That's what these performances have. They have ardor. When was the last time you heard that much ardor? In a performance. So there you go. And like I said, while there are other wonderful individual performances and fabulous cycles, despite the fact that Savalish was not the most charismatic of conductors, and the Staatskapelle Dresden, a great, great, great orchestra, but it wasn't, it was up against the Berlin Philharmonic and all those other great orchestras, everyone's recognized this. I mean, everyone has recognized, everyone who's heard it has immediately recognized it. And that's a special thing. That really is. It's remarkable that there could be this kind of consensus around these artists in this repertoire. It really, I think, says just how amazing these performances are. So I have no hesitation and will brook no compromise in declaring this the reference recording for the complete Schumann symphonies. There's no doubt about it. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.